Does time exist if no one is looking at it? Are time and space absolute? And can time go backwards? People have been looking for answers to these questions for centuries. This phenomenon cannot be imagined in the mind and therefore scientists from all over the world are trying to explain it mathematically, which so far remains an impossible task and causes a lot of disagreement in the scientific community. If you ask a scientist the question, what is time, the most likely you will hear in response, this is what is measured by hours. So what is time really? Is this an illusion or a physical reality? In this video you will learn. What is time in terms of physics? Why is time measured in hours? What are the theories of time? What secrets hides this ticking mechanism? Is it possible to travel in time? And what do we need time for? What is time? time figures in any science. How does physics explain time? This is perhaps one of the most difficult questions that can be asked in principles of physics. We are good at measuring time, but we still have a rather poor understanding of what exactly we are measuring. In the international system of units, all standard units today are already tied to the values of fundamental constants. That is, their values are determined exactly and do not need experimentation. And only the unit of time, the second, is still determined from experience. The answer to this question of what time is will depend heavily on the era. In the 20th century, for example, this question was raised upside down many times. Initially, a person generally perceives time purely psychologically. By the way, Einstein also reported this when he explained his theory of relativity using an everyday example. He said that an hour spent in an excellent company would seem shorter than five minutes spent on a hot stove. But psychological time, of course, isn't good for physics, because it is not uniform and can go faster and slower. Therefore, some more stable sources of feeling the flow of some processes are needed. People quickly learn to measure time, coordinating it with astronomical cycles, the daily cycle, the lunar cycle, the annual cycle. And for a long time, it was astronomy that provided humanity with the most reliable source of understanding where we are going. People saw around them recurring periodic phenomena and learned to compare their own feelings of current processes with natural cycles. 300 years ago, Newton said that time is an axis that counts some parameter at every point in our space. Time in his concept is a certain quantity that can be determined in the entire universe at once, and therefore we can say that there is an absolute time that we can determine without reference to any arbitrary agreements. Newtonian time is a kind of universal time which is absolutely objective and does not depend on human perceptions. A kind of ideal time. But as we know, nothing ideal exists in nature and Newtonian time is something like a spherical horse in a vacuum. So Einstein in 1905 did what should have been done with Newtonian time long ago. He showed that we can't measure it. Albert Einstein showed that if we can only exchange information at a finite speed, such as the speed of light, then it is impossible for two people to synchronize their clocks without some additional agreement. A year can be represented as a circle containing 360 degrees. It remains a mystery, perhaps the number 360 in this context came from the fact that there are 365 days in a year, and this figure was simply rounded up to 360. Once upon a time, the shortest unit of time was an hour. The ancient Babylonians were strong mathematicians and decided to introduce smaller units of time using their favorite number 60. Therefore, there are 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. But why is a day divided into 12 hours? For this, we must say thanks to the ancient Egyptians and their dual decimal system. Day and night were divided into 12 equal parts considered different kingdoms of being. Most likely, the original use of the number 12 is associated with the number of revolutions of the Moon around the Earth in a year. For physicists, time is needed to measure the processes of evolution, or as Einstein said, so that all events do not happen at the same time. Scientists were shocked when, as a result of experiments, they discovered that it was impossible to build a time machine. That is, it was impossible to build a space-time in which causality would be guaranteed to be violated. But scientists have found that we can stumble upon such a space. It cannot be guaranteed that if you follow some actions, if you perform some actions, you will inevitably fall, as they say, back into the past. Scientists still face the puzzling question of whether time travel is actually possible and how it can happen. For this, we need a quantum theory of gravity. 
quantum corrections can greatly affect the possibility of time travel. We are still very, very far from many experiments in this area. If you like this exciting journey, join the community of science and space lovers by subscribing to the channel. I would also love to see a thumbs up from you so I know you enjoy my videos.